So I'll move on to a little bit of an overview of, sort of some of the ways in which you can optimize performance through, you know, the different layers of the, of the stack. And again, I'll start with an analogy to try and, you know, uh, liven it up and, and, and make it easily understandable. Uh, but if I was to ask um, you, you know, you got two cars, one's a 1.6 litre, one's a 4.5 litres, which is faster. Um, what would your intrinsic answer to that question be? Any, any, uh, any answers on that one? I can, I can say like I would... Point. Yeah, you'd yeah. say the 4.5. Yeah, you'd probably yeah. say the 4.5 <laughs> is, is probably faster than, than, than a 1.6, right? But, you know, what if the 1.6 is a Formula 1 Ferrari and the 4.5 is Toyota Land Cruiser Diesel, which right. is faster then? Okay, <laughs> of the course, Ferrari is faster? Ferrari? Yeah. Okay, what if yeah. the race is 1,000 kilometers long and you can't refuel? <laughs> so, <laughs> so the answer is it really depends. <laughs> Yeah, that's the answer. It really depends. And there's a whole range of factors, you know, behind it. And the same is absolutely true with site performance. And you can't just focus on one of them. You've got to consider all of them. You know, if you've got to carry four passengers versus one, the Ferrari is not going to be very useful to you and it's not going to win the race. So you've got to think of all of these, these parameters. So to give you an example of, of this, um, you know, and, and one of the kind of things I'm very passionate about personally, because we see this in our interactions with people that are making inquiries with W Pynchon all the time, is, um, you know, there's this obsession over server specs, right? That, you know, all mm -hmm. you need to do to make your site faster is get a bigger or a faster server. And, you know, it's so much more complicated than that. And that is so much not an apples to apples comparisons of, of other providers because of all of these other factors that I'm going to run through. Um, so an example um, to show this, uh, as I mentioned at the start, I'm a Liverpool fan. So this is a, a Liverpool fan site, Empire of the Cop. And down the bottom right hand corner, you can see a web page test, which is a performance result, um, you know, for that site. Um, so, you know, you can, I don't know if you can make out the numbers at the, at the bottom, but I'll walk through them. You can see that, uh, you know, the time to first bite, where's that? Uh, time to first bite 16 is 1. seconds, is that right? No, oh, That's the fully point. loaded time, yeah. Fully yeah. loaded is 16 yes. seconds, but the first bite is 1.7 seconds. So the initial response from the hosting platform that's serving up that first piece of content is 1.7 seconds, but it's then taken 17 seconds to load the whole thing. Right. Yeah, that so, seems like eternity in this age. It seems like eternity. Yeah, um, and yeah, I guess this site can get away with it because us Liverpool fans are pretty loyal, and we're going to stay on the site anyway. We're not going to bounce off and go to a Manchester United site, right? But you know, <laughs> the point. The, the point is that um, you know this this seventeen seconds is is too long for most sites, but. The initial response from you know the person requesting the first piece of information to the website and the host and server responding to that is only 1.7 seconds. So what's happening between those two is all of the content on that home page is being downloaded, and that's what's taking too long. The site isn't optimized, right? Like the images are too big, or there's too many images, or you know the the, the code is inefficient. Whatever, whatever. You know you can see some green and red lights on the web page test. I won't get into those details, but yeah, the, the point I'm trying to make is, you know, typically with most customers, there is far more scope for improving the speed of your website through optimizing the site from a code and from a um, you know, content perspective than there is through, you know, upgrading servers. Um, you know, so, you know, another example is, you know, if you've got, you know, small car with a 1.1 litre engine, you've got four big guys in it going up a hill, it's going to go slowly right so yes you could put a bigger engine in and make it go fast but if three of the guys got out that's also going to help so you know you need to try and think of a bit more holistically and as i say if there's optimizations that could be made at every layer of the stack this is the good news right so there's lots of things that you can do um before you even think about you know having to you know upgrade hardware or focusing on that as, as the problem so let's start on the infrastructure side so, you know, it's three big questions you need to ask. Where's your website hosted? How is it hosted? And what is it doing? You know, those, the, the answer to those questions is going to, um, you know, impact the, the performance that you get. So looking at the first one, where's your site hosted? Obviously, you know, 
it needs to be hosted close to your intended audience, right? So if you've discovered through web page, through your web um, stats, through your Google Analytics, that most of your users are coming to the site from the US, um, but you know your server is in you know Hong Kong, then that's not ideal for your customers, right? And some sites might have a lot of visits from different parts of the world, and they need to think about how they're going to deliver that content you know, to them locally. Um, but, you know, pretty simple concept. You want to make sure that your website is hosted as close as possible to where most of your audience are. Okay. You also want to understand how it's hosted. So this does get into the infrastructure piece, right? This is the, the, the one element that everyone kind of focuses on and obsesses on in, in most cases. Uh, but, you know, this is important. I'm not saying it's, it's unimportant. You know, you need to make sure you're with a provider that uses good quality infrastructure, that you're on infrastructure that is appropriately sized. Um, you know, but whether using on-premise versus cloud hosting and what the performance, you know, profile of that is, is, is also important. Not all infrastructure is, is created alike. And then the third thing is, what is your website doing? So there is a world of difference between a website that serves static images and content that doesn't change and a website that delivers, you know, uh, you know e-commerce capabilities or has, you know, membership um, you know, functionality where people are logged in and retrieving information that's personalized to them. Because, you know, static content, I'll come on to caching later, but static content can be quickly served from caching layers. And, you know, that minimizes the work that the underlying infrastructure has to do. Whereas a more dynamic site uh, that has to, you know, interrogate the database to, you know, process an e-commerce transaction or, you know, work out what courses someone logging into a, 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 an LMS system is, is going to consume, that's far more intense. And those caching layers typically can't help uh, with that type of traffic. So, you know, one website with 50,000 visits a month may not perform the same as another website with 50,000 visits a month or require the same amount of infrastructure or hardware to power it. 